Hi, you're with India Post Live and this is Cricket Caravan. Yes, the show that is all about cricket. Tonight, today it's about IPL 7. I'm Ishan Russell and at India Post Live, we'd of course love for you to come in and be part of this conversation. Uh, you can also join the Cricket Caravan as we are calling it. Uh, IndiaPostLive.com is the name of the website. Just log in over there, post your comments. You can also post video comments if you want to come in via Skype or Twitter. And we have a whole host of experts over here. We even have experts coming in from Wizz in India uh, to talk about uh, cricket and the present game and what has been happening, the players, the stats, all that and more will be thrown at you. You can also join in this conversation using Twitter and other social media. You can go using our face, you can come in using our Facebook page or you can use Twitter, hashtag India Post Live to your tweets or you can use our uh, Twitter handle at India Post Live to join in this conversation. Alright, so we're talking about IPL 7 and we're review, reviewing the weekend oh, that happened. There were a couple of good matches and uh, really strong performances by a couple of batsmen like A.V. De Villiers. Uh, so let's have a review first of uh, the weekend in IPL 7. The inaugural weekend of the 7th edition of IPL in India had everything in it. Winless Mumbai Indians broke the winning streak of surging Kings 11 while Rajasthan Royals tamed Delhi Daredevils in their own den. But the tweet for cricket fans was preserved by Royal Challengers Bangalore for a finishing punch Sunday evening. Protean A.B. de Villiers smacked Dale Stain for 24 runs in penalty mate over of the match. Stain, counted among the world's best bowlers for death overs, was hit for three massive sixes and a boundary when challengers needed just 28 runs from 12 deliveries. The Kolkata Knight Riders, who are suffering their own woes, are taking on foes Rajasthan Royals at their new home, Ahmedabad. With their last encounter in Abu Dhabi deciding in the Super Over, this match is also expected to be a barbed wire. Alright, so the IPL is back in India and a lot of weekend action. We'll be analysing all that and more and what can we expect from the future tournament uh, tournaments in the future. Uh, we have with us Shekhar Lutra, he's a resident cricket expert and the assistant editor with uh, DNA, the newspaper. Also, Tala Masood Siddiqui joins us. He runs uh, one of the most fantastic cricket blogs called The Cricket Desk and a young budding commentator as well. Also, uh, Dilip Ramachandran and Anand Vasu of uh, Wisden in India join in. Wisden in India, of course, will be a partner with India Post Live in this cricket caravan series that we are doing and we're I mean they'll be providing us tremendous support in terms of analysis statistics and all that and more and Surindran Nambiat is here with us he's of course a cricket enthusiast uh, so I'll start with Shekhar uh, how was the IPL weekend uh, IPL back in India we saw Neeta Ambani bring a whole host of school <laughs> children I mean there are thousands of school children so good moment for IPL for cricket fans I mean at least for those kids yes. Uh, for uh, those kids only, I think it was a more home advantage rather mm. than any other player. Back in India, it doesn't matter for most of the players because most of the homegrown players are nowhere to be seen. You know, the, the idea of having a catchment area uh, as it was started, you know, seven years back, the idea was to have uh, the same kind of homegrown, uh, you know, juniors like Messi or uh, Beckhams or all these Roonies so that they can come up, uh, you know, uh, after two, three years and uh, can support the team, can be, a, you know, a lo your local flavours in the team. But right now, I think apart from Rohit Sharma, who had some, uh, who knows this Vankade Stadium little bit, and apart from, uh, you know, uh, maybe Rishi Dhaman for that matter, who has little bit of idea of Mohali ground. Most of the players are either been you know imported or are or are coming from other states. So the idea of home games are completely not working in this IPL. So when you talk about cricket, yes, definitely a good game when uh, a bottom place team like Mumbai has defeated top uh, top ranked uh, team of Punjab. That was a good match. And then uh, last night's game when uh, A.B. De Villiers actually smashed, you know, the best fast bowler in the world. Mm -hmm. and Dale Stain for 23 runs. Dale, that, Dale Stain uh, was a <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, good games uh, of cricket and the bounce is little bit, you know, varied mm -hmm. from what we have seen in the UAE leg and now in the Indian leg. I think bounce has varied and so has the, you know, most of the foreigners are again adopting to this, uh, you know, variable bounce rather than Indian players because this should be suiting uh, to most of the Indian players, but uh, I have not seen any Indian players actually excelling so much. Tala, what about your take on the weekend uh, so far as far as IPL is concerned? 
Well, the matches were fine. I think the most exciting game has to be when Mumbai Indians series <coughs> of five loss comes out and beats uh, Punjab. Uh, apart from that, individually, I think I was very impressed with the way Karun, Karun Nair batted that day. Uh, he's a young cricketer and he's, he has great prospects for the Indian team. Uh, I, I don't need to comment on A.B. De Villiers because we all know what he can do. But I think uh, the interest is slightly, slightly trickling to come back. But it's still a long way to go. However, with cricket, like Mr. Shekhar was saying, the home advantage is not a, is not a point for the players. It is more for the fans. That, that, that their teams are playing in that town. There's nothing to do with players because they play on different grounds. Someone plays in Rachi, he's, his home ground is Motera. Someone plays in, in Dharamshala, his home ground is Vankhade. So th those things don't matter for the players. But I think for the fans and for the general interest around the tournament, that goes up. And that has gone up. All right. Uh, let, let's get in people from uh, the Bible of cricket, as it's called, Wisden. And Wisden India is, of course, partnering with us in Cricket Caravan. Dilip and Anand are here with us from Wisden India. Thanks very much, guys, for coming in. Dilip, I'll start with you. As far as uh, young player Karun Nair is concerned, uh, he was quite a revelation over the weekend. And uh, we can hope uh, something better from him. Have you been tracking him all this while? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the players who's caught the eye over the last domestic season. But I don't agree with what uh, Shaker said, though, mm -hmm. because I think there are plenty of uh, young players who've made an impact already during the IPL. Sanju Samson's had a couple of very good innings. Right. Uh, Rishi Dhawan, uh, then uh, Chahal with uh, RCB has uh, had a couple of very good spells. There are enough players showing up. It's just that uh, the whole idea, we need to get away from this idea that... Uh, you know, homegrown players means guys from that town or that city. That doesn't exist anymore in professional sport. Whether you take the English Premier League or the NFL in the US, it's all on, you know, who can afford to pay money for a certain player, they'll go there. So I, I think it's a bit churlish to say, okay, this guy is not from Bangalore. The, what matters is that uh, he's committed to that team and most of these players seem to be. All right, but Anand, at the end of the day, with IPL, the fact is that you, one expected, I mean, and there are uh, many young players doing the rounds, but in terms of uh, the next Sachin Tendulkar, or, I mean, the, the expectations were pretty high. So, I guess in terms of expectations, uh, that way we weren't able to produce that many young stars as we'd hoped to with IPL 7 or with the IPL series itself. Yeah, I think uh, there is always an expectation that when you see an unknown player or a large group of unknown players, the next future star is going to come out from there. But uh, uh, given that there are four foreigners in each side and there are three or four established Indian players in each side, the role that a young Indian player, a domestic player can play is often very limited in these teams. Mm -hmm. You only see teams uh, like the Rajasthan Royals consistently promoting fresh young talent. And they're doing so not because of any uh, great altruistic motives, but because they like to work under a very tight budget. They like to uh, uh, build a squad around players who are not uh, superstars. If they, each season, they've managed to at least bring forward one player who's had the kind of success that uh, you didn't expect him to, someone like a Praveen Tambe, then someone like a Sanju Samson. And Karun Nair, uh, for all his uh, success in the Ranji Trophy this year, uh, I doubt he would have got a chance to bat at the top of the order in uh, one of the other IPL teams. If he was with Mumbai Indians or if he was with uh, Chennai Super Kings, you have a guy like Baba Aprajit in Chennai Super Kings who's done well at different levels. He hardly gets a game. So I think uh, only some franchises have worked out how to use these domestic Indian players. And it's a very important thing to do. Unless you do that, there's no way you're going to get a, a good 11 together consistently. All right, uh, Shekhar, would you want to come? Well, well, uh, again, you know, as uh, Dilip was saying, you know, the homegrown <coughs> concept was definitely there. You know, I, I don't uh, know because uh, the way presentation was made in the first year, the way uh, Mr. Modi came up with the idea that the catchment area will actually, you know, help uh, uh, local teams. Uh, local teams, when I say Delhi means, you know, uh, North Club Zone team. players, you know, or, or, or uh, along with uh, Punjab. They'll help actually build in the teams. Where is that concept has gone? Uh, nowhere. And as far as what uh, Anand was saying, definitely, you know, it is apart from, uh, I think, Rajasthan Royals, no other teams has actually, you know, uh, given that much of emphasis to the younger players. Of course, Samsung.
uh, is a revelation, definitely. All right, it I, was I, not I, just I want to figure out who the next batsman, best batsman for India is, and we're going to start a Twitter hashtag uh, trend with that, or hopefully, so you can also join in hashtag uh, best batsman in IPL. And uh, let's see, if AB De Villiers, of course, a contender after his <laughs> performance yesterday. But Sanju Samson is in the next MS Dhoni. It, he's definitely a very cool player. The way he's uh, you know batting under pressure. And uh, the way he is handling pressure also because his technique is very uh, compact. And also the way he uses the long, long handle whenever it comes to. I think that gives him definitely an edge over the rest of the you know, uh, juniors. Whereas Karun Nair, I, I didn't see him you know, during the domestic season. But the way he played other night, I think he is definitely one to watch out for. Sanju Samson? Uh, next MS Dhoni yeah. is too soon. <laughs> but uh, he's he's definitely on the right track. Uh, mm. Sanju Samson is on the right track. And just to add what Mr. Nand was saying, uh, the best thing about Rajasthan Royals is that they've stuck to the task of what the IPL stood for mm. in the first season. If you look at the players that have made it to the Indian squad of the national international era, Ajankya Rahane is Rajasthan Royals. Sanju Samson is Rajasthan Royals. Stuart Binney is Rajasthan Royals. Ravindra Jadeja. Ravindra Jadeja was Rajasthan yeah. Royals. And you go back, and you go back, Sohail Tanvir, was also Rajasthan Royals. So if you see that they, they know how to nurture talent. And I, and I think Rahul Dravid is the right person when it comes to like just nurturing those players. No other franchise would have risked sending uh, Karun Nair at, at number three or number four when they were in a pressure game. Because mind you, they're not leading a table. They're number three, number four. And I think I'd really respect Rahul Dravid for that. All right, Rahul Dravid is proving to be helpful for the Rajasthan Royals, but Anand, uh, as far as the Mumbai Indians are concerned, I mean, I think they have more mentors than players over there. So, I mean, what do all these mentors do from Sachin Tendulkar to Ricky Ponting to Jonty Rhodes to, I mean, they have a whole galaxy of stars. It's almost the Real Madrid of uh, cricket uh, that uh, we have over there. But in terms of performances, while they might have won the match over the weekend, it's not going all well for the Mumbai Indians. And Zaheer Khan, how about that injury to him? I think there's always been two schools of thought uh, when it comes to this mentoring and coaching and assistant coaches and uh, teams. There are teams which manage with very few of these people. There's a, there's a great advantage in that you have a clarity about who's in charge, who's in control, who you need to go to when you have something to sort out. And the other side is uh, having access to seven or ten different experts. And all these guys have had glittering careers. There's a thousand odd test matches sitting in that uh, dugout uh, in Mumbai Indians, you have Anil Kumble, Sachin Tendulkar, Ricky Ponting. There is information there, there is experience there, there is knowledge there. But in a tournament like this, where you're playing one day, traveling the next, training the next day, you're playing again, how much room is there actually for young players to go and seek out these uh, legends and how much are they able to gain from them? That's not really very clear at the moment. And if you look at coaching at the end of the day, you're going to look at a win-loss record. Mm. Uh, Rajasthan has the least number of coaches. They, they spend the least amount of money. They seem to do quite well. Mumbai uh, had a great season last year. But this time around, they just haven't been able to get it together on the park. So uh, it's always easy to talk about how a coach does after seeing the score sheet and after seeing the win-loss record. But I think each of the franchises have different approaches to dealing with it. And it's working for some. It's not working for others. All right, and in fact, uh, you know what Anand was saying, definitely too many cooks can sometimes, you know, even spoil the uh, food, you know. <laughs> because I was talking to one of the daily players who was uh, part of Mumbai Indians for two years when Sachin was, in fact, the captain. And uh, I was just asking him uh, if he had a chance to interact with Sachin and what kind of, I mean, uh, uh, conversation was this. He actually told me, you know, it was only last week when I was talking to him. He said, for the first time, first year, you know, entire first year, I didn't even had a chance to talk to him, you know, it was, I mean, it was a aura or I was too, you know, little laid back not to go and approach. And the second year, of course, when you actually come to know some person, then second year he started talking to me, he started telling me a little bit of things because he was a spinner. So, I mean, this is exactly the case. When you have too many youngsters, when you have too many stars from around the world, having Anil Kumble or Sachin, sometimes not even work, you know, because they, if, even if they, they will try and be friendly with you, it takes some time. And by that time, 40, 50 days, the tournament is over. 
All right, uh, but now I want to come back to the Twitter hashtag that we're trying to start, and we'd want you to join in this conversation as well. You can use uh, Twitter to join in the conversation as far as the hashtag best batsman in IPL, and also a hashtag uh, India Post Live, of course, or use our Twitter handle at India Post Live to join in this larger conversation. But uh, Dilip, uh, coming to uh, the best batsman around, and Virat Kohli seems to suggest that uh, A.B. De Villiers is the best batsman in the world, and uh, the consistency that uh, his performance is literally almost in every match is something that uh, I mean any team can depend on uh, such a player yeah I think across formats uh, if you ask most people who the best batsman is I think they would say A.B. De Villiers uh, the international record in 2020s is not great I think he averages 21 or something but if you look at the IPL uh, you look at test cricket you look at uh, one day internationals 50 over cricket uh, I think A.B. right now is a, is, is a class apart from everyone else. And that would include people like uh, Virat Kohli, Hashim Amla, uh, Michael Clark, who obviously is, is not perhaps as good in the limited overs formats as he is in test cricket. All right. Uh, b a bit about A.V. De Villiers, Athala. He's an exceptional player. I think, uh, I think, I mean, I've, I've always, I've uh, watched my cricket from players like Tendulkar and all that. So the first shot that Tendulkar would play, you would know if he's batting well or not. Mm. And I think that is that is somewhere which I think A.B. Virabilis looks very confident right from the start. Uh, and I completely agree that cross formats, he has to be the best player, uh, best batsman in the world on current form, on current form right now. And especially when you're playing alongside, you know, uh, Chris Gale, Virat Kohli, and then Yuvra Singh. You know, it takes a lot of character to, you know, actually give your best at that level. And that's what he showed after they got out. And uh, it was almost, uh, you know, two runs per, per ball that they needed when he came in. And the way he changed the scenario, hats off me. He is not just technically correct, but the way he improvises his shots. Even those shots are so, I mean, I would say perfected in probably during the practice sessions or whatever. Even those, he hits them very cleanly. Very nice. He's one of the cleanest hitters, and as far as the hitting for uh, the Royal Challengers goes, uh, they might have the best batsman in the world over there. I mean, there's Chris Gale, Kohli himself, A.B. De Villiers. But I mean, in terms of performance, and in terms of the batsman really running away with the match, uh, Anand, we haven't really seen that with the Bangalore team, have we? No, we haven't at all, and I think one of the uh, critical reasons for that has been Chris Gale. Bangalore have depended very, very heavily on him to set things up at the top of the order in previous tournaments. We've seen that when Gale does well, Bangalore scores big. I mean, there are other batsmen in the team. Certainly, Virat Kohli is among the best in the world. Um, I think he's the best Indian batsman around at the moment without any uh, doubt. Uh, no discredit to Rohit Sharma. Uh, they still have Yuvraj Singh, who's uh, not had the best of times, but he's an explosive 2020 player. And I can't see why he won't do well at some point in the course of this IPL and A.B. De Villiers. But it's very, very important for Bangalore to have Chris Gale set things up at the top of the order. He's been struggling so much with the hip injury that, uh, in fact, the team management has told him to take it as easy as he likes and mm. uh, come into the action perhaps later in the game. But he he's felt the need to contribute. Uh, I suppose when you're collecting the big bucks, you also want to con at some stage and he had three injections uh, to his hip before he played the first uh, game of this season and uh, I think he's not anywhere near full fitness yet he's struggling to play the big shots that, that we're used to seeing from him he's also uh, struggling to uh, make that uh, shift of gears because he normally starts quite slowly builds himself up and then suddenly explodes but I think that change of gear also is not happening as easily for him because the rhythm's missing and I think once Gale gets going, then you'll see the really big scores from Bangalore, especially in their home ground. But it was a pretty uh, well-fought match in the sense that, I mean, Sami and Gale almost uh, had a bit of a tiff. Uh, talk a little bit about that, fella. Uh, well, you know, uh, they're teammates, they're, they're, they're very good friends, but sometime in the heat of the moment, uh, a nudge here, a nudge there, you're taking a single and, and, then, and the bowler just has an elbow out and it leads to things. Uh, but I agree, I think uh, Chris Gale uh, is, is not full fitness right now. Um, I don't know what's, what's around with him, even in the T20 World Cup, there is so much talk about Chris Gale setting the games up, but somewhere or the other it's not happening and uh, maybe Chris Gale needs to introspect and just sort things out for himself and then start scoring. But just to add on, I don't 
I mean, we've, we've seen like six matches per tournament, uh, per, per team in this tournament, mm -hmm. and none of them have been those explosive runs, uh, run fests. We haven't seen that so far in this IPL. So, wh what would you attribute that to Shekhar? The pitches, uh, the bowlers doing really well, what I mean? I mean, initially, of course, uh, we have seen the, you know, later part in UAE when the spinners or pacers, both were doing well. Mm -hmm. For the first time, you know, in, uh, in the recent past when actually bowlers dominated a couple of games. But overall, I think coming back to India, these are fresh wickets. These are, again, the same old good batting tracks. Uh, which have been provided to these players. So, we can see that, uh, you know, the foreigner, uh, as, as I started with, you know, the foreign players are making most use of it, you know, rather than the Indians. Of course, Shikhar Dhawan yesterday, you know, he was in fine touch. Uh, he scored a little bit and then, uh, uh, for that matter, a couple of other Indians, but uh, like uh, Nair or, or others. But the problem right now is, as Anand was saying, that mm. our teams, most of the teams are dependent on one or two players. Mm. You know, if they are not scoring, if Warner is, you know, hitting nice, the team will get good score. If, uh, same in the Delhi squad, nobody is actually exploding at the top of the order, despite the fact that they have I was five or six, you know, top world-class batsmen right. in their ranks. If they are not doing well, what, whom you can blame on, you know, that's the basic problem. And, and apart from that, I think this tiff between, you know, Gale or uh, Sammy is something to do with the captaincy of West Indies, <laughs> because this has come back from, you know, that time when he was made captain ahead of Gale, and Gale was actually had to, you know, absent from the world cricket for for almost one and a half or two years. All right, so is that a relationship that could, uh, I mean, as far as the West Indian team is concerned, yes, I mean, I'm sure that tussle is there, but I don't think uh, in terms of the IPL, uh, Anand, it will be seen uh, pretty often, or in the sense it's that kind of an intense rivalry between Sami and Gale. No, I think the, I think there's a very unequal uh, battle here between Sami and Gale. <laughs> one is a, a heavyweight T20 player and the other one, is like just about finding player. his feet as a batsman, though he began as a bowler who was also captain of the side. So I, I don't think it's an equal playing field in terms <laughs> of uh, the two guys. And we've seen in the IPL also, you, you saw what uh, A.B. de Villiers did to uh, Dale Stane yesterday. He took him apart on the field, but soon mm -hmm. after, the, he went across and gave him a hug. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you have these guys who are used to being teammates playing against each other. and. You, when you're playing against anyone, even if he used to be your teammate six months ago, at the heat of the moment, you're bound to uh, lose your rag from time to time. I think uh, in that sense, the IPL has actually cooled down uh, temperatures, because previously country versus country, it could get very nasty. We're seeing fewer and fewer nasty incidents of that kind, because everybody just knows each other well, and then once you get to know someone, well, it's harder to abuse them. All right, uh, we also have uh, Surendra Nambia joining us. Surendra is a cricket enthusiast. Surendra, you've been patiently listening to our discussion. What would you question or comments would you have for experts over the IPL 7, the weekend? We've talked about the best batsman, hashtag best uh, batsman in IPL. Do that one, uh, Surendra, as well. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm directly on the show. Uh, one uh, observation which I heard uh, on the show also, which I had also been hearing for some time, was that, you know, we don't seem to have a ground advantage, a home ground advantage. Uh, the foreign players are doing just as well as they were uh, elsewhere. And our players are also, you know, playing the same way. There's been no outstanding Indian performance. Now, given that, uh, my question is, you know, is this also to do with fitness? Uh, are we, you know, not as fit as the other guys? This, this problem, you know, has been plaguing Indian cricket for a long time, Indian sports for a very long time. So perhaps, you know, I, we could find an answer there. When do we find a bowler with the pace of Dale no, Stain? No. Oh, that will probably not happen in our <laughs> lifetimes. Because, uh, because, you know, the only person in Delhi Rajasthan Royals game who was actually at home was Rajasthan Royals Rajat Bhatia, yeah. who has played so much on this <laughs> Delhi track. He knew where to bowl, he knew about the slower ones, and, you know, he was probably, you know, enjoying or the, or the crowd was also behind him. Right. Because he was the only home player uh, in, the, in the sense. So, as far as, you know, having Dale Stain, that is something, you know, I have been uh, asking myself, I have been waiting for to happen in a, for last, uh, say, 25, 30 years, ever since I started playing or then uh, covering cricket. But that is not happening. Of course, there are reasons, but uh, those reasons... Physical fitness, be, one of them? Physical fitness has improved a lot. 
you know, right. if, yes. if IPL yes. has contributed something to cricket, Fitness. apart from, uh, you know, completely spoiling the batting or batting right. or bowling show, that is on fitness. Fitness has and improved fielding. tremendously. And we have seen some great catches. We have seen some good fielding, you know, right. uh, over the last six years. So probably, you know, fielding is something. I would say that uh, fitness or the fielding has actually improved because of IPL. All right, let's put that question to the preachers of the Cricket Bible at Wisden in India. Dilip, what would you say to that question? Uh, if we're talking about fitness, no, I don't think that's the issue it was a few years ago. If you look at somebody like Virat Kohli, he's definitely as Very fit, true. as well prepared as any foreign player out there. Uh, I think what we need to look at is the workload that some of these players have. Even somebody like Dale Stain has looked well below his West Best this IPL. I think you have to look at the, the amount of high-intensity cricket he's prepared, lead, uh, he's played leading up to it. World T20 series against uh, Australia, uh, another uh, away series before that. So, and, and you look at the Indian players as well, how much cricket they've played. So, uh, the IPL being played at the end of long seasons for most teams, there is uh, an element of fatigue that will definitely creep in. And you... Look at somebody like Aaron Finch, for example, who's done really well. He doesn't play for Australia across formats, so yes. there's less cricket played there. Those players tend to be a lot fresher. They also It's also their big opportunity to make a name for themselves. So I think all these factors come together. You can't really compare a Finch with a, a, a Kohli or a Dale Stain because those two have played a lot more cricket in the previous nine months. All right, uh, let, let's also get in a few tweets and people have been writing in. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Paradoxical par Paroxym writes in that obviously Maxi, but Sanju Samson's batting is eye-catchy. Uh, then what else is there on Twitter? Uh, Vikas Huda writes in uh, AB, AB De Villiers or Con. Aaron Finch, uh, Aaron Finch also to an extent in terms of the best batsman that we're talking about. And uh, But what about, uh, but want to see... And an Indian with the orange cap. Do we see an Indian? Do you see an Indian player trying to run away with the orange cap, or it's too late in the tournament? Six matches have been played. How many are left? I think seven each. No, there, there is enough time. Fourteen there, complete matches. There, uh, there is enough time. All right. So, who can we expect an Indian batsman to wear the orange cap? Let's take that question from Twitter. Any uh, Indian play, batsman in the contest? Well, Ajinkya Rahane is number six right now. Oh, yes. Uh, he's got, I think, some about 195, 196 runs. He's an exceptional uh, T20 player. Uh, and he's done well in the tournaments. And uh, so that is definitely on the cards because how he's performed in the six matches. But uh, maybe two, three good games for Kohli, two, three good games for Sanju Samson, Suresh Raina. You never know. Suresh Raina, has, of course, leads the all overall run getters since the seven years. Mm -hmm. So two, three good games for these guys, you never know where that orange cap goes to. Oh yes, a big, uh, big innings is definitely due from Virat Kohli for sure because mm. uh, he's the one who takes up these challenges. He's the one who is a very, very you know Khundaki player for that matter. You know, and if his team is down, if his team is, uh, of course they have won last match, but if his team is not doing well, he always takes, uh, you know, uh, comes in the front and takes this pressure. So apart from that, yes, Suresh Raina for him, you know, this is a great opportunity to actually wash out all those allegations and all those things that he is probably not fit for the Indian team in the bigger formats. Mm. So this is the platform where he has always excelled and being the highest run getter in the you know overall IPL. He, he must be looking forward to not just bang the opposition bowlers but also you know come clean with the fact that he still has a lot more to contribute to Indian cricket. All right, uh, Dilip, uh, as far as the orange cap is concerned, uh, with the Indian player who could uh, really make a challenge for it right now? I I'd go with those three names that were mentioned, Rahane, uh, Raina and Kohli, because they all bat in the top three, which means they'll get plenty of overs to face in most cases. And, and you look at Suresh Raina and the, the person that you see uh, compared to his struggles at times in international cricket, he's a completely different player in the IPL. You can see... The confidence is almost visible the way he goes out there and hits bowlers. Uh, I, I think he'll have a strong season again this year. And like Shekhar said, I, I fully expect uh, Kohli to come good as well. All right, Anand, final comments to you. Uh, as far as IPL, the weekend action was concerned, so we saw uh, A.B. De Villiers. I think he, we would label him the star performer of the weekend or would you have somebody else in mind as well? I think you, it's very hard to look beyond the A.B. De Villiers innings, especially <laughs> since it was uh, it, since he was there to finish the game off in the manner that he did. 
it, it's the thing that's going to stick in your mind. When Dale Steyn is bowling at uh, 140 plus and a guy goes down on one knee and is able to play the scoop shot, I, it's one thing doing it to a gently medium pacer, but to even have the guts to get oh, down yes. on one knee when the ball is coming at you that fast and then to make a clean connection. I mean, that's the image that I will remember from this weekend's matches. It, and in most other batsmen would have said, I'll play out Dale Steyn and I'll attack the other bowlers. But what did A.B. de Villiers do? He attacked Dale Steyn and pretty much finished the game then and there. <laughs> and, and in my mind, uh, that be the performance of the weekend. Yes, in fact, I think Dale Steyn would agree with that one as well. He was applauding a couple of the shots of, uh, or, or even of his bowling. So, gentlemen, on that note, we've absolutely run out of time. Thank you very much for coming in. And this is Cricket Caravan. Wisden India is, of course, partnering with us. Uh, Dilip and Anand were here from t uh, Wisden today. And a lot more people from Wisden India would be joining us. Thanks very much, guys, for coming in. Thank you very much, Surindran, for coming in. Hope we answered your question and hope look forward to having you part of this conversation more often. Thanks very much, guys, for coming in. And thank you also. Shekhar and Tara for joining us in the studio. Well, that's it. Uh, this was Cricket Caravan, all about the IPL this time around. And the hashtag, of course, best batsman in IPL. Do hashtag that. Uh, use also our uh, Twitter handle at India Post Live or hashtag India Post Live to that tweet as well. And talk to us. Tell us about uh, cricket and what do you think, which is the uh, next topic that you would want to talk about in Cricket Caravan. Do write in to us. Well, that's it from here. Thanks so much for watching.